What's up guys? Hey everybody. Welcome to another Travel Therapy Mentor weekly video. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about tiny living, uh, van life. This is a question that we get quite often. Um, I know just in the last couple months there's been a lot of new grads that have reached out to us that are very into the van life uh, hashtag on Instagram, things like that, following that and wanting to emulate that as a travel therapist. Um, and we're going to talk about some of the advice we give other people. Um, so for anyone interested in this, this should be uh, a good topic to cover and give our perspective on the situation. Um, we have quite a bit of experience with living in a small area because of the, the camper. We lived in the fifth wheel for over three years. So um, we have some perspective on this. Um, so Whitney's gonna introduce us. I'll get this video shared in a few different groups and then we'll talk about van life. All right. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. My name is Whitney Aiken. And I'm Jared Kazazo. And we are both traveling physical therapists. Many of you guys may have tuned in in the past for our videos. We try to do a video every week on our Travel Therapy Mentor page about various topics. We've talked about all kinds of things in the past. Um, we've been doing these videos for over a year, pretty much consistently every week. So if you're interested in learning about various topics pertaining to travel therapy, you can look back through all of our old videos and learn about most topics. Um, we are getting to where, you know, we've done a lot of the main topics, so we're getting into some more niche areas. So I know this tonight's topic won't apply to everybody, but there definitely are a lot of people that are interested in learning more about tiny living. So, you know, we've kind of talked about the whole RV thing in the past, and tonight we want to touch on um, vans and some other things. So. Um, I know that we don't have direct experience with van life, so definitely take what we say with a grain of salt tonight. I know there's a lot of people that are going to disagree with us. There's a lot of people that really enjoy and embrace van life, but we just want to talk about some of the considerations that we kind of went through in our head and in our research that made us decide that it wasn't the right choice for us. And in our opinion, we don't think it's the best choice for a lot of therapists that are thinking about doing van life as like a more full-time living situation versus van life for just road trips and for fun trips. Um, but before we dive into tonight's topic, first, if you are watching this live, we'd love if you'd say hello. Um, we'd love if you'd leave us a comment and let us know who you are. Are you a current traveler? Are you somebody who's thinking about traveling? Are you somebody who's interested in van life? Are you currently doing van life? We'd love if there were van life people on here who could tell us all the things they love about van life and tell us maybe why they think we're wrong. Um, but real quick, we actually have a special guest appearance today. Um, we have a friend who's visiting who's a fellow physical therapist. Her name is Elizabeth Hickman, and we're gonna have her just come on and do a quick cameo and say hello. Hello. <laughs> so um, Elizabeth was my roommate in DPT school, um, and Elizabeth actually did traveling therapy for a short time, and she's visiting us um, during these crazy COVID times from Richmond, and we're so, kind of social distancing, yeah. uh, not really, <laughs> but um, I thought it'd be interesting tonight to have Elizabeth just say hi, because she actually had her own tiny living experience. So do you want to tell us a little quick blurb about your sure. tiny living experience? Um, so I actually experienced a little bit of uh, tiny living as a travel PT as well in an area that Whitney and Jared lived in, um, in North Carolina, and I lived on a boat for about a year. So just a whole nother aspect of different things that you guys could look into, um, pros, cons, just options. Oh, I know. What was that like living on a boat? Like definitely a small space, right? How very, was your experience with that? Very small space and very rugged at times, but you know, it's kind of a neat way if you're just getting into the whole mindset of things, you know, embrace it. Yeah, we, we had some struggles with our RV living uh, in the fifth wheel, but we were talking about it earlier and I think the fifth wheel space-wise is probably about the same size as the boat but Elizabeth definitely had more issues with living on the boat than we had living in our fifth wheel even though we did have our fair share of issues. I think part of the yeah. issue is your boat was kind of under construction it, for part of the time right? It, it was. It was definitely an older <laughs> wooden boat and one thing that I will definitely appreciate for now on is when you're going to work not having to worry about falling on or off a dock <laughs> and falling into the water as you go to work with your laptop. Yeah. So, um, yeah, again, just another another perspective, another way to be mobile with your living. Yeah, I have a question. Do you think that, um, I know tonight's video is mainly about vans and we're going to talk about kind of the difference between vans and RVs. Do you think that living on a boat would be ever a possibility for a travel therapist, like a normal travel therapist? Um. <laughs> Maybe, but I feel like there are a lot of other expenses involved with that. And then obviously your travel assignment locations, you've got to be somewhere that's near the water and then your marina fees and everything like that as well. So 
uh, I, I did it more so just for the experience. I don't know if I would do it long term, but that's just me. You yeah. know, yeah. there might be some other people out there well, that are really interested. And in I that. know you kind of came into it in the situation you were in the location that you mm -hmm. already were at, which was by the water. Yeah. And then you talked yeah. about maybe in the future you could potentially take that show on the road down to like Florida or somewhere, but it would mm -hmm. definitely be location dependent. It would be location dependent. And then obviously you would have to plan out, you know, what waterways are you taking and, and you know, just some other factors that um, you may not typically consider but just another way to be mobile and you know it, it could keep your costs a little bit lower if you're not paying too much in terms of a um, like a fee you know to live at a marina yep. um, but yeah mobile but you got to be near the water okay. so it kind of rolls out some spots yeah but there's a lot of a lot of people that are very interested in van life or living on a boat or those kind of things are kind of almost seems like idealistic or at least they're portrayed that way on social media so yeah i mean i think those things kind of go very closely together um so we're gonna not we're elizabeth's not gonna do the whole video with us i just want to <laughs> let her have a quick camera but i do have one last question so what would be your takeaway of like just a life lesson of what you learned from tiny living and like your experience on the boat um i guess all in all is be flexible and adapt to what things are you know enjoy them for what it is you know, tiny living for all of those of you who are watching and definitely for you guys, I know your experiences, you got to make a lot of compromises and a lot of different things. But my favorite thing is waking up in the morning, having coffee, looking at the sunrise and the water. Yeah. So, you know, you take your pros and your cons. Pros That's a good cons, point. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks for sharing your yep. experience. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So Thank we'll you. let Elizabeth go and hang mm -hmm. out and um, Thank you. sign off her Facebook live premiere. <laughs> Um, so we're going to try to keep tonight kind of short and sweet because we do have a friend visiting. Um, but yeah, you know, we want to dive into a little bit of just kind of the pros and cons, some, some research that we've done and our understanding of like kind of what van life might be compared to our um, fifth wheel life. Again, if you're watching, we'd love if you would comment, if you would share your insight and your experience, your questions that you yeah, have. Yeah, this is something that uh, I just wrote an article about this because when we first started traveling, uh, van life was not really... It wasn't really popular back then, I guess, or that we didn't know anyone doing that and uh, weren't big on social media back then. So that was five years ago. And at some point along the journey, it became much more popular and that became something that I kind of researched and thought about for us. And uh, so basically we're talking tonight about why we didn't end up going that route and why we don't think it's probably the best route for a lot of travelers, but there are a lot of caveats there. Yeah. So. We definitely, I mean, I don't know, we don't know a ton about it. Again, we haven't done it, but in, in my mind and kind of after going over all the considerations to us, it seems like van life would be really cool as like a short term um, traveling for fun type option, like to take road trips, to take vacations, to do things like that um, on weekends and maybe, you know, one to two to three weeks for, for a trip, but not necessarily when you take into all the considerations of being a travel therapist and, and replacing your short-term housing when you're away on assignment. And we're going to talk about why we think that is. Of course, there are people that do it, but we're just going to talk about the various factors that we think that make it more challenging and maybe not the most ideal thing to replace your short-term housing for three to six to nine months. Yeah. And one thing we're actually looking into right now <clears throat> is I've been looking for a few months now as uh, getting a minivan for my next car that we can use for things like road trips. So Essentially, it's gonna be a minivan guy. Yeah, I, I don't care about that. <laughs> um, so essentially, we get a minivan, and we would uh, have a probably a full size blow up mattress in the back that we could take on road trips and stay in for maybe two or three nights at a time, and then maybe you know use gyms or Airbnbs every now and then to shower things like that. Um, but this would be a very short term thing. Um, and I don't think that like living in a van for an extended period of time would be something that would work for us. Yeah. So let's get into talking about like in detail why we personally don't think it's a good long term um, solution for full time living. And I saw Sarah joined. I know Sarah is, uh, she lived in a van for quite a while, I believe. Yeah, um, Sarah, we'd love to hear from you. I don't remember, did you live in it full time or were you using it just more for trips? Um, we'd love to hear your insight because I definitely know like on Instagram, there were some people that were probably wanted to fight us because they were like, we love van life and we're travel nurses or travel therapists and like it's it works for them and they like it. Um, but again, we just want to talk about some of the considerations of why we don't feel like it would be that great, but may, we haven't lived it, so I don't know. 
So the first thing in terms of if you were thinking, okay, I'm gonna be a travel therapist or I'm already a travel therapist and I don't wanna do this whole short-term housing thing anymore. Like I don't wanna to have to do Airbnbs and hotels and all this stuff. And maybe you're thinking like, maybe I could do an RV or maybe I could do a van. When you're thinking about kind of the difference between an RV and a van, in our opinion, like a van conversion, cost is a huge factor. It's a huge factor. And uh, I think most people at least that reach out to us asking this question. So like I said, there have been at least a few in the last couple of months that have reached out asking about, what do you think about a van? Do you think that would work? Um, almost always cost is the main consideration. So what those people are thinking and what I was thinking when I looked into it is I'll buy this van up front and then I won't have any, um, I won't have any monthly expenses after that. So basically we'll be able to move to the assignment. We'll be able to stay in places short term, uh, like parking lots or truck stops or whatever, and not have any living expenses that way. So that's what most people are thinking. And usually these are single people that plan to travel by themselves. Um, and so that's what I thought at first as well, but there's some issues with that. So one of the issues, um, I, I kind of want to talk about just the upfront cost first and then talk about the housing, like paying to stay somewhere cost second. So the big thing in the beginning is a lot of people choose to do van conversions. Sometimes they buy them already converted or they choose to buy an empty van, like a Sprinter van is like a pretty typical, um, the big, like white, tall vans. They buy the van and then they convert it themselves or they DIY it, um, or you can pay a company to do like a conversion kit, basically. Um, there's a lot of expenses. They're actually really expensive. Like if you start looking at vans, I know you looked up some of the prices of like a Sprinter van, even a used one. Yeah, I when, I when I looked into this, I looked at this probably four years ago when I first started learning about it. And then I looked recently, because I wrote an article about it that'll be published soon. Um, and I was finding used vans, so I wouldn't want to get anything with a lot more than 100,000 miles just because I would start to get worried about taking it on long road trips for possible breakdowns and things like that it would be very inconvenient. So for something that was used, uh, probably around 100,000 miles were somewhere between 20 and 30,000. Um, and those were vans that didn't have anything done to them. So then you, at that point, you'd have to do some sort of conversion, either mm -hmm. yeah, D DIY or pay someone to convert it for you. And that would be a used van. If you decided to buy a new van, I mean, you could be looking at 50,000 plus for, for this new van. Yeah. Um, and then the conversion, just depending on how much money you have to, to put into it. If you do it all DIY, if you're pretty handy, I'm sure you could save some money, but it's still there pretty expensive. There are massive differences there. So I did some research on this as well. Um, you could probably, if you did everything yourself and you bought used materials and all that, you could probably do it for as cheap as one to $2,000 or as much as like $35,000. I saw some companies that were charging massive amounts for like full van conversions. So there is a huge array there. Yeah, so you could be looking at, I don't know, a range of 30 to 50 to 60 to 70 to 100,000. I mean, we know some people with some really pimped out vans that you could be looking at tens and tens of thousands of dollars. So now, pretty pricey in, on a lot of the, depending on how you convert it. Yeah, uh, and like we said, it really depends on what type of traveler you want to be and what your purpose for traveling in a van or any kind of tiny living situation is. If it is for the experience, then that is a completely different uh, topic and you could definitely do it just for the experience factor. But if it's strictly for costs, um, in terms of buying a van and uh, outfitting and everything, I think that our the fifth wheel that we bought, fifth wheel and the truck that we bought, would probably be close to the same amount. Um, maybe slightly less for the van uh, with a conversion, but it would be very close. And if you bought something, you know, we'll get into talking about some other alternative types of RVs, like say you bought a Class B or Class C motorhome, which are the smaller motorhomes that are gonna be more on the scale of a van conversion, those are even a lot cheaper. And in our opinion, they're kind of already done for you, which some people don't like. Some people want to DIY it. Um, but we're going to get into talking about some of the like intricacies of like what's inside the van versus what's inside the RV. Um, and when we get to talking about things like sewer hookups and, you know, a working shower and all that kind of stuff, those are already done for you in the RV. You don't have to plummet. You don't have to run electricity because a van, if you just buy a van, it's a car, it's a vehicle. It's not a home. It's not equipped to be a home. So you got to do all that stuff yourself. So there are certain things. Maybe you want the couch to be exactly how you want the couch to be in. You want the cabinet to be exactly how you want the cabinet to be but like in our opinion like things like putting some kind of water and electric and sewer in there it's just crazy so yeah and and for comparison's sake when we we said all that about the van 
in terms of comparing to our fifth wheel setup, our fifth wheel cost us about $16,000 and our truck cost about $18,000. Uh, we bought both of those used, both were, uh, the camper was less than 10 years old, the, it was like maybe six years old or five years old, and the truck was uh, 10 years old. So we paid a combined total of around thirty-four dollars to $36,000 for those um, compared to you know, a van, whatever those costs would be. Yeah, and I think you could get, if you really were into that style of living, rather than having like we did a, a trailer that you pull behind a vehicle, um, and you're really into that tiny style of living, all compact in one thing, like your class B and your class C motorhomes are more similar to that. And still, if you buy one of those used, it's gonna be a little bit less probably um, expensive than the van conversion. Yeah. So in our opinion, the upfront costs, just that's a huge factor. And that's something that doesn't, if your goal is to be financially savvy, we don't think the upfront costs are really that financially savvy. Now, yeah. um, so a class C, I think that's a good comparison. A class C motorhome, uh, that is uh, bigger than a van, but and they range in size. They can be like 20 foot to 28 or s somewhere in that range, but you have a lot more room in there. There's actually a bed and a bathroom. Um, it has holding tanks. It has um, electrical Kitchen. outlets. Yeah, everything outfitted for you. Um, you can buy used Class C motorhomes for probably a similar range to what you would buy a used Sprinter van for. Before the conversion. Before the conversion. Yeah, and you wouldn't have to do all the remodeling. Of course, you could DIY a bunch of stuff in there for a couple thousand dollars. Like I said, rip out the couch, do your own furniture, that kind of stuff, but you're not having to really redo the whole bones of, of the operation. So the upfront cost is a huge consideration. And then we want to get into talking about, um, are you going to completely eliminate your housing costs? Because you might think, well, that's once I'm done with my conversion and once I've paid for it, then that's all my housing costs, right? Like I don't yeah. have to pay to live somewhere. I don't have to pay rent. Um, but what we need to consider here is as a travel therapist, in most circumstances, your typical traveler is going to maintain a tax home. If you don't know anything about tax homes, go back and watch our videos, read our articles on that. But in order to maintain a tax home, one, uh, maintain a proper tax home, one of the major things is you need to be duplicating expenses both at home and at your travel location. So when you live in an RV like we did, um, you have to park your RV somewhere that you pay rent to more or less, like an RV park, an RV site, or you know it could be a personal per person's property that you park on um, and you pay rent to them and you have a lease, but you need to be um, keeping evidence of the fact that you are duplicating expenses. And it's actually the same thing if you have a van, if you plan to be the type of traveler that maintains a tax home in order to receive tax-free stipends as a traveler. Yeah. Um, and that's a good point. So usually when someone reaches out about being uh, or living in a van, we talk to them about, or a lot of people that I've talked to, I'll say, you know, the upfront cost is usually about the same or maybe even higher with a van compared to an RV or a camper. Uh, and they say, okay, well, yeah, but then I wouldn't have to pay for rent at a campground or wouldn't have to pay for any of that. But that's not really the case because you still do need to duplicate expenses to have the tax on. So uh, in most situations you're probably going to be paying for a campground site just like you would with a camper in order to have that duplicate uh, or duplication of expenses so yeah you have your tax home that you're paying for while on assignment you also have to have duplicated expenses um, and a campground or a campsite would count for that um, but the campsite they don't charge you any differently if you have a van park there or if you have a huge fifth wheel park there yeah. the same cost and not everyone will I'm sure there are some people that um, boondock like in a parking lot and just live in a parking lot or live somewhere in their van and don't pay rent to live somewhere but I would have a lot of questions for those people are you taking all your tax all your pay fully taxed or are you just risking it and not and not playing by the rules and then you're risking an IRS audit in which case that you would owe back taxes on all the money because you didn't actually duplicate expenses to have a home um, but maybe they are maybe they're doing um, what's called um, itinerant being an itinerant traveler where they just take all their paid tax so you still get paid pretty well but you don't maintain the duplicate housing and maintain the tax home and all that stuff so if you decide to do it that way maybe van life living in a parking lot or whatever and not paying housing expenses would work but the most typical traveler in order to make the tax-free stipend money has to duplicate expenses yeah and as an itinerant worker you have to realize that on average you're probably making 300 dollars less per week which over the course of a year is a lot of money that adds up to probably 12 to 1500 dollars less per month that you're making um, because of the higher tax rate so 
Uh, if you're doing it strictly, if you're gonna be an itinerant worker just strictly for the uh, not having to pay rent while you're traveling, uh, you can do it that way, but you're going to make significantly less than you would as a traveler that gets tax-free stipends. Yeah, so I don't know, depending on what the campground rent would be versus not having to maintain the tax home, it could be a wash and it might work out. Um, but I just will say, like, if you plan to be what, what is the typical traveler and you plan to follow the rules the way that you're supposed to follow the rules, you would still have to pay for housing costs. And that would eliminate the freedom of, you know, being in a van and being off the grid. Yep. Um, in terms of the costs and also in terms of costs so compared to an itinerant worker everyone obviously no matter where you live in the country it's going to be different but where we live in Virginia our tax home we were paying between 350 and 400 a month um, throughout our time traveling for our tax home so we rented a room paid 300 to 400 a month um, and that was pretty low cost and then on top of that, the campground rent that we paid for parking our fifth wheel was usually somewhere between four and six hundred a month. Um, so all in all, when we split that cost, so all in all, we were probably paying um, probably eight hundred or nine hundred dollars a month each in uh, in rent to maintain our tax home and also our home while we were away traveling. So that's just a little bit on the cost. Again, a lot of people's reason for wanting to do van life, reason for wanting to do tiny living may have nothing to do with the cost. Maybe you just wanna have an awesome experience, you think it's gonna be really cool, you're willing to deal with the upfront costs. Maybe you plan to keep it even after you, you're gonna be a travel therapist any longer and you plan to keep it for adventures and stuff and to you it's an investment. And that is totally valid and we totally get that. But if you're strictly setting out to do it, because you think it's going to be cheaper, you think you're going to save a lot of money, you may or may not really come out as far ahead financially as you think on the surface when you first yeah. start thinking about it. And of the people that I've talked to that I've explained all of that to, all of them have changed their opinion on it once they learn that, okay, I still have to pay for a campground, I still have to pay these upfront costs. Um, basically, when you look at it that way, what is the benefit of that over finding a, a, a camper that is about the same cost? Yeah. Um, so the next thing we want to talk about in regards to choosing van life and that form of tiny living is, tiny living is just kind of the comfort and the hygiene aspects. Um, so one big thing is it's just a small space. It's a really small space. Um, most of the time, if you, if you do a van conversion, like you get a Sprinter van or whatever, you're not going to have any opportunity for a slide out. Whereas with an RV, even the type, um, I think it's the... C motorhomes, C. not the Bs. They wouldn't have slide outs, but the, the Class C or any other type of motorhome or any other type of travel trailer like we had, you have the opportunity to have a slide out, which allows you to have more room once you've parked the vehicle, which gives you extra square footage. Yeah. Um, and then also some of them are just really tight. Like depending on the way you convert it, depending on the style you get, like some of them you might not even be able to stand up all the way in. Um, certainly you're not gonna have a ton of space just regardless I mean it's a van it's a car basically it's it's a big car yeah. you're not gonna have a lot of space so you're really sacrificing on space whereas like we can safely say in our RV we had so much space if we're if we're comparing square footage to so you might think okay well a van is small but it's not that much smaller than an RV well compared to our fifth wheel uh, we had somewhere around 240 square feet of livable space in the fifth wheel Whereas in a van, you'll probably have between 40 and 50 square feet of livable space, which means that it's about five times smaller than what we were living in in our fifth wheel. Um, so that is a significant difference. So it's part of that is just part of the experience. It's cool, it's awesome, um, but it's just something to consider. It's really small, especially if you're coming from living in, you know, not a tiny living situation. That's really small, depending on if you have a partner, if you have a pet. I mean, gosh, we've known people that lived in vans with like two people and multiple pets and. Um, it's doable, but it's going to be tight and because of that a lot of people that do van life from our understanding Really embrace like their outdoor space like they really don't stay in the van all the time Like it's all about experiencing like where you park it and like using your outdoor space Which we're gonna get into talking about a little further in a minute, but yeah, that's what's up John Suzanne Joe Thank you guys for joining. Yeah, thank you guys again If anybody's watching this live like please leave us a comment ask us a question tell us we're stupid tell us we're wrong like we want to hear your insight your input um, yeah, I mean, we are fully uh, welcome to differing opinions because this is something that I was really excited about for a while and I just put a lot of thought into it and did a lot of research and what I came to the conclusion was uh, we would not be any better off than in our fifth wheel in terms of cost and we would have a lot more space in the fifth wheel. Yeah. Um, and if, even if, like if I was a single traveler, I still would get like a class C motorhome yeah. that has more room 
um, about the same cost and then the same monthly cost it wouldn't be any higher because for a lot of people I don't think that that's like necessarily a choice like I don't think they necessarily are like could I get a van or could I get like this 33 foot fifth wheel like some people just yeah. want small and I get yeah. that so in a little while we're gonna kind of again continue to make that case where we just don't feel like you're better off buying an empty van and converting it versus getting like an RV class B or class C that's basically like a van but just already made that way for you yeah. um, that's how we feel but okay so one of the things is the smaller space the other thing is just again if you do a van conversion you buy an empty cargo van that has nothing in it you have to think about this doesn't have a place for running water this does not have a place for sewage a toilet a shower it does not have a place to even hook up electricity it's not like an RV on the outside of an RV you have all these hookups where you plug in your sewer and underneath there's this magic like sewer tank that you don't see magic. but it's there like you don't think about it you walk in it and you think okay this has a living room and a sink and whatever but you don't understand what's going on underneath it has a water tank it has a sewer tank it has an electrical hookup you roll up into a spot at an RV site and you plug all your stuff in and it just works you just turn on the water Hopefully. like at a house hopefully it works when it doesn't that's when it's a problem you just turn on the water like at the house and you flush the toilet like at your house and when you buy a van it's like do you have all that are you going to build it that way or are you going to live without it because if you live without it that's a whole other thing like if you choose to build a van that doesn't have a toilet and a shower in it then you have to park somewhere like an rv park so you can use their toilet and their shower or you have to plan your entire life around when you're going to make it to the gym to shower and those kind of things or go to which, the bathroom i pee way too much for that i'm sorry but like i can't just rely when you can barely make it through these videos so <laughs> i just and i know that i'm not the only girl out there who's thinking the same thing like i can't just live in a parking lot and like have to plan my whole day around like when we could go to the bathroom or not like if i've got to go i need to have one there now i do know that some people choose to build a van to have like a composting toilet um i wish i'd asked elizabeth about that when she was on with us because she had a composting toilet in the um in the boat and she said you have to be really worried about when it's um it's summer because they get flies in it and all kinds of stuff so you have to think about the toilet the shower maybe you can build it that way but then that's a lot of work or maybe it doesn't have it i think a lot of them don't have it um your kitchen space you have to think about your kitchen space how you would build that a lot of them do build in like fairly decent like functional kitchens but there are some that people do like a smaller van where they do almost like a camper van thing where the kitchen is kind of like outside like it's just a cooked top yeah and even the ones that do have a kitchen inside a lot of times they don't have running water or if they do it's a very small tank because it, there's not enough room to put big tanks underneath a van there's not one there's not much clearance but um you can't you can't have a large water freshwater holding tank usually it's maybe seven or eight gallons whereas in our camper, we had, I think, like 30 or 40 gallon holding tanks or maybe even more than that. So that is a, a big thing to think about is where are you going to get fresh water? How are you going to shower or um, brush your teeth or all of these things yeah. that you have to consider when the van is not outfitted for living in? So it's just it's a lot to think about in terms of the amenities that are inside um it's a lot to think about in terms of the hygiene and just the conveniences uh, um so the next thing we have to think about here is like where are you going to park it like do you choose to park it at an rv site because then you can utilize their bathhouse and all their amenities and so you can duplicate expenses like and so you can duplicate about. expenses or are you going to try to boondock and like live in a parking lot and then you have to outfit the inside of it and convert it really specifically to be able to do that or you have to rely on some other type of facility like maybe you park in a 24-hour gym parking lot maybe um the other thing i want to talk about is just the aspect of like parking and driving it and like driving it to work so, yeah and this is going to differ a lot whether you're an individual traveler or a couple like i could see maybe making something work if i was traveling by myself in a big sprinter van that had a pretty decent conversion i think i could make it work by myself as a couple it is there's no way it was it would work for us uh maybe some couples of wood um but yeah thinking about where you're going to park it and how you're going to get to the amenities you need for everyday living how you're going to cook food are you going to cook food or are you just always going to get takeout um, those kind of things 
are really something you should think about before considering. Yeah, so you really have to consider like, is it going to be your vehicle that you drive and your house, or are you gonna have a separate vehicle? Like, are you going to haul a little car with you, or the part, or your partner might drive a separate car? Are you gonna keep a bicycle with you, or a motor a bike, a motorcycle, something else to commute in? Because not only, like yeah, a van technically can fit in a parking lot. Like you could drive it to work, but as we know from like when we set up shop, like when we get to a place and we set up our RV and everything, like it is out and it is there for three months. Like it is yeah. not moving because you can't set stuff on the table and set stuff on the counter and then drive it. Like that stuff will fall down and it will break. So you can't just do it. And then the other thing was I was talking about people relying on like their outside space because a lot of people when they set up like camp, they set up their chairs, their lawn chairs, their outdoor stuff and kind of use their outdoor living space quite a bit. Well, you can't set up camp and all that stuff and then like drive your van to work and then back. So you have to consider like how you're going to approach that. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's something that people forget about too. It's like, uh, I used to get this question a lot when we traveled in our fifth wheel and I would tell patients that we lived in our fifth wheel, they would say like, I would tell them we were going on a weekend trip and they'd be like, Oh, are you taking your camper? And I'd be like, no, I'm not taking the camper. We have to pack <laughs> everything up and unhook everything and hook it to the truck and take it and find somewhere to park it, unpack everything. Uh, it's, it's a lot of hassle. So no, we once we set it up somewhere, that was just our house and then we did everything else separate from that. And so with a van, you'd have to decide, you know, are you gonna set the van up and then you're gonna have like your living situation just set like that and you're gonna drive a car separately or are you gonna drive the van to and from work? In which case you need to pretty much have most things put away all the time. Otherwise things are gonna fall down and break. Yeah. I mean, I think that we did talk to a guy one time that literally lived in the parking lot of the facility. Yeah. Like, he just lived in the parking lot of the facility. I don't know what he did about hygiene and stuff like that. He had um, a water jug. Uh, he had a water jug and he had a pee jug. Um, and he would dump that at work and he would fill up the water jug at work and he made it work that way. And he would he drive to the gym to shower or did he shower at work? I'm not sure. I don't know, but I guess he just got out of, like, oh, I get out of my van in the morning and, like, walk over to work now and then like your patients know that you just like live out i don't know to us like none of it makes sense i we, it's not that it makes <laughs> sense i can understand the appeal it's just that uh cost wise and with everything considered i think that there's a much easier way of living in a, a camper or something for a similar cost yeah i want to hear other people's opinions yeah. i feel like we should do another van life video where we like interview somebody who has done it and like find out what their solutions were to all these things because we're not saying it can't be done there are definitely people that do it we know that our friends colin and jasmine just bought their van like two days ago and i probably like totally burst their bubble and made them think we were jerks because i was like oh we're gonna do a video on sunday about like why we don't think it's a good idea but they obviously think it's a great idea they're super excited about it yep, they're planning to live in it full time we got a couple people. messages on and comments and stuff on Instagram of people that live in it and they make it work I'm just saying like this video is more for somebody who is trying to decide if it's right for them you need to go through the thought process the mental exercise of everything that we have on our list like consider the cost consider the tax home issues if you're gonna maintain a tax home consider the comfort and the hygiene and the parking and the driving and just take into account all those things and decide if it is right for you because I think sometimes people just get the idea that it's like oh this is so cool I'm gonna do this it's gonna be great but I don't know if they have looked into all those logistics and we yeah. want you guys to make informed decisions and like I said when I initially thought uh, about doing a van I thought that that oh man this would be so cool I see all these pictures on Instagram it looks so awesome you can just park in these cool places and you wake up and you have this awesome view um, so yeah I, I understand that if you haven't put a whole lot of thought into it, it sounds amazing. Um, and it could be amazing. Uh, the only issue is all the things we laid out. Is it really worth it in terms of cost? Is it really worth it in terms of either giving up a tax home or still having to pay for a campground that you would do with a camper anyway? Mm -hmm. um, and then when you consider all those factors, is it is it still something that you want to do? Yeah. So kind of when we go through this whole thought process and thought experiment, it, it, we just come back to the, the point that we think our being if you want to do the tiny living is probably the best solution for travel therapists on for their actual living um, quarters for their assignment and that's what we decided for ourselves um, for the various reasons we in general we think the RV route is like less expensive because you don't have to do all these conversions and pay all this upfront money like it's usually going to be less expensive unless you can find something very very cheap a very cheap van that's still reliable that you can DIY do the conversion yourself and maybe you can keep your costs less than like ten thousand dollars then then yeah it's gonna be cheaper. yeah I mean maybe there's some way but um, it seems like a lot of them 
um, are pretty expensive, are pretty costly. Then the other thing is like, in our opinion, the RV, the, especially if you just wanted something similar to a van, if you got a class B or class C, it's similar to a van, but it's already built with all your main necessities, your amenities, your, your water, your electric, your sewer. You could gut the whole RV and redo all the, the pretty things, the cabinets and the carpet and the drapes and the curtains. Um, drapes and curtains are the same thing. I meant to say um, couches and furniture, <laughs> um, appliances. You could redo all that like more cosmetic, more easy to DIY stuff, but like keep the bones of it, like keep the structure of the RV that the RV manufacturer already built for you. In every time you opinion. say the bones of it, it reminds me of that country song that... It's the bones of it. Yeah, yeah every um, time. That's so that's kind of where we come back to. Um, the other thing, like Jared said, just cost-wise, you're probably, if you choose to maintain tax time, you're really going to have to pay for an RV site or to live at someone's property anyway. You're going to have to pay for one anyway, so why, I don't know, why not just do the RV? Um, you know, as long as you can keep your costs low with the RV, like we always talk about, like buying used. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with it. In terms of just like van life in general, I think it's really cool. Like Jared said, we see some really cool pictures on Instagram, people just parking and living their best life and oh, wake up to this beautiful view. And it's obviously more compact, like there's some pros. We just feel like it's more for like the adventure of weekend trips, like in our opinion, like road weekend trips. trips or road trips. And like I said, um, hopefully this road trip, we have a road trip planned in September. If everything goes according to plan and we find a minivan that works for us, you guys might see some pictures of us traveling around in a minivan. But the, the difference is uh, we would not do that for an entire assignment where I have to go to work, you know, wake up at 7 a.m. to make it to work by 8 um, and shower and like mm -hmm. look presentable. Uh, I would do that to like drive to a national park and go hiking the next day. But I just think it's a very different thing to live in a van full time and then be working and come home from work. Uh, than it is to, to do like a road trip for like a three month set period. Yeah, if you guys see us driving around in a van, you're gonna be like, these freaking hypocrites, yeah. they got a van after they said vans were stupid. No, vans aren't stupid. We no. have thought about doing the minivan like on this upcoming road trip. So we would just like kind of camp in it, just sleep in it um, one or one to two to three nights in a row. And then like on the third or fourth night, go to an actual Airbnb or hotel and like get a proper shower and everything. And then maybe sub, um, supplement in between with like going to a, just to um, save money. Yeah. You know, we'd sometimes go to gyms to shower, like do an anytime fitness membership or a planet fitness membership or go to rest stops, um, truck stops and use their facilities and stuff like that. But it would be more just like a place to just sleep and kind of camp. It wouldn't be to live in. Cause in yeah. our opinion, we just don't feel like it's the best solution for living in like as your actual home for a whole assignment. But we do know people that like have a van and like do it like uh, the whole sprinter van conversion thing for weekend trips or like week or two long road trips. And that would be cool too. I just don't think it's the best solution for living. And it's very expensive. Uh, I guess we could talk real quick about why we are looking more into minivans than the sprinter vans is because there's a, there's a variety of reasons. You can buy a used minivan with about the same mileage for five times less than a sprinter van in a lot of cases. Yeah, how much were the ones you were looking at? Uh, we were looking at ones between like five and eight thousand dollars that have maybe 120,000 miles and probably eight years old or so. Um, whereas sprinter vans with those same uh, qualifications are twenty to thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So it's a huge difference there. And Jared would just keep it. So he like one day when we have kids, he would just be like the minivan dad. So like we would use Soccer it for our, our road trips, but it would probably just be his car that he would drive. Because yeah. right right now he doesn't have a car. Because I have a car, and we sold the truck for the camper, and that was his car. And now he doesn't have a car. So yeah. And then in addition to that, um, you have to think about gas mileage. So obviously, pulling a fifth wheel is awful gas mileage. We uh, we learned that pretty quickly. I think we got five or six miles a gallon pulling that fifth wheel. So that is not a good comparison there with a van, but in terms of minivan compared to like a full size sprinter van, minivans get really good gas mileage. So if we were gonna go on a 5,000 mile road trip like we did last September uh, around the country, then uh, I think the minivan would save us a lot of money in gas. Yeah, so we might be minivan people, um, but I don't think we're ever gonna be van conversion big van people. And I'm still coming around to the idea of like driving a minivan around as an everyday car. Uh, I feel a little weird about it. You're going to just get started on that soccer dad life real early. Yeah, I guess. I'm yeah. So um, thank you guys for watching. We would love to hear from you. If you are watching live, please leave us a comment and let us know what you think. Uh, what's your opinion after hearing everything that we said? Um, what's your experience? If you are tuning in later on the replay, we would also love for you to leave us a comment. 
um, give us a thumbs up. If you're watching later on YouTube, subscribe to our channel so you can see more of our videos. Um, we'd love any kind of love that you could give us on the video and just let us know what you think. Like, even if you disagree with us, we want to hear yeah, your opinions. For sure. I mean, if you guys know of a way that it would work, then I would love to hear it because that is something I would really love to do if yeah. we could just make it work. All right. Um, so let's go through. We have a few comments. Yeah, but um, if anybody's watching, please leave us um, any comments that you have. Amber says, I just wanted to say thank you for making this video. I'm going back and forth between van life or RV. I'm just starting off with the idea. So this video is so helpful. Yeah. So just think through those things. I mean, maybe you still would like to try living in a van, but just think through how are you going to do your tax home? Is it really going to be cheaper? Could you find an RV that's used that someone wants to get rid of that you could get for less than the price of a van, which in some cases, at least in our area, you can, you can find a, a class C that's a similar year for about the same price. So think about those things. Think about what are you going to do about, um, showers and bathroom and cooking and all that and definitely talk to some other people that like live full-time in their van and find out what their experience is and what solutions they found to all those things that we are looking at as barriers um but we haven't experienced directly ourselves so please like you know ask around and try to learn as much as you can um melanie says a van would be a lot more space than i had living this past summer in my subaru outback for three months wow she says, I was touring the country at the time and I wasn't working as a traveler. I loved it and I could take it anywhere. Yeah, and in that kind of situation, I do think that there's some value in living in a small space if you don't have any work obligations um, for us. Like if we, if we could buy a Sprinter van for very cheap and we could drive around the country in it, I would love that. But I think it's very different to wake up, have to get dressed professionally for work and show up in a presentable manner um, every single day, I think that would be a lot harder, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, and it also sounds like Melanie was on her own um, yeah. based on her comment in her Subaru Outback for three months. Um, I definitely think it could be doable, um, you know, a small space for one person. Um, let's see, we've got a couple more comments. Again, awesome. if anybody has any questions, um, hi Morgan, thanks for tuning in live. We do appreciate it. Um, let's see. Uh, Arfat, uh, Arfat says, thank you, so helpful. I'm a travel PTA, thank you. We're so glad to hear it. Um, Lauren says, thanks, this topic was great. I have also been researching a lot on van life, bus conversion, tiny home living, and RV life. You guys nailed a lot of points, and I also learned some things. So thank awesome. you, Lauren. I'm glad it was helpful to some people because we were very worried about talking about this because I know Everybody's a lot of people- Everybody's gonna hate us. <laughs> a lot of people are very opinionated either one way or the other, and we were afraid that um, some, some people that Van, they think that van life is going to be perfect for them would be upset about it. So yeah, thanks. so we do want to leave you with this. Like it is totally a personal opinion. I mean, so many people would have told us that we were crazy for living in an RV. So a lot of people did tell us we were crazy. I mean, we, patients, coworkers, everybody told us we were crazy. We do weird things. So like, we're not telling you that you're weird. Um, although I did tell Colin and, and Jasmine that they were, they were wild and they were crazy to think about living in it full time, but I'm just messing with them. Like it's going to be an awesome adventure. I can't wait to see them do more TikTok videos outside their van, inside their van. Um, but I'm so excited for anyone who has any kind of tiny living adventure, like make the most of it. Do Everybody has their own opinion, their own life, like you do you, um, to each their own, all those good things. So we're definitely not telling you like don't do it, but we just, after going through this whole list of like pros and cons, we don't feel like it's yeah. the most optimal solution for us and we don't feel like it's probably the most optimal solution for most travel therapists. And, and this video really is mostly for people that are on the fence that just don't know what they don't know. Uh, and, and that was us in the beginning. We didn't know what to even think about in terms of which would be better. And things like tax home and uh, how much space you have in plumbing and all that stuff really swayed us uh, in the other direction. So just to think about those things is very important. Yep. Uh, we have a couple other comments rolling through. So Arfat said, I did it for a few months. I had a 24 seven gym membership. It can be done. Definitely a class B or C is better. So Arfat, did you mean, did you do the van conversion? Or did you do the class B or C? Cause we'd love to hear. And where did you park? Did you park in a parking lot or did you go to an RV site or what'd you do? Uh, Joe says, great job as always. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate the love. Um, Sharon says, it is hard to get past the better financial circumstance with an RV. Yeah, it is. Uh, 
that was the most surprising thing for me when I was thinking about a van. I thought, okay, we'll get a cheap van. We'll put some stuff in it, a bed in it. It'll be wonderful. And I thought it would be very inexpensive. And then when I actually started looking at vans and conversions, and uh, you know, it would be very different if I was very handy, but I'm not. Whitney is also not. So the chances of us actually building a van out together would be pretty low. Yeah, we're like definitely not DIY no. people. So that's probably a big like, eh, like for yeah. us. So, whereas like we know a lot of you guys are. When I looked into that and I looked into the price of a van plus the price of a conversion, the van would have cost us more than our fifth wheel and our truck did. And um, knowing what we know now, uh, you know, the, the fifth wheel and the truck maybe wasn't the best financial move either. Um, but at the time, comparing the two, I think it was a better choice for us. Yeah. So again, if anybody is watching live or later on the replay, please leave us a comment, leave us a question. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we'd love to get some insight from some actual van lifers to tell us the ways that they make all these things work um, and how it worked out for them. Because you know, you definitely have to do your research if you are on the other side of the screen thinking about whether it's right for you or not. Yep. So. Yep, so we'll be back next week, uh, I believe next Sunday. We're actually leaving for the beach tomorrow, so that'll be exciting. Um, but we'll be back before next week's video. Uh, we don't know what we're gonna be talking about yet, but we if you guys have any ideas or any um, questions that you have about travel therapy in general, we can always cover that. Um, but we'll see you guys next week. All right, oh, and the last, um, Arfat said that he was in his SUV and he parked at Walmart's Planet Fitness and he's considering getting a Class B motorhome. Yeah. yeah, Class B or cool. Class C, I think is. Well, the good way to go. luck, and I'm sure it'll be an exciting adventure. And again, we're so pro you guys doing crazy and different things and tiny living. Like, try it. Why not? You only live once. So much better than settling down with a mortgage, in our opinion. But we are really. We do have a house, house, though. Yeah, we have a house. But we don't have a mortgage. Yeah. All right. So you guys take care. See you next week. Good night. Bye.